So in this short video, we're going to introduce our first technique for a practical method for calculating determinants. Uh, in actuality, this is the most practical method. Some variant of what we're going to talk about is what is used by any modern technology to calculate the determinant of a matrix. So we're going to look at what is the relationship between determinants, EROs, which are elementary row operations, and ECOs, something we haven't talked about a lot, elementary column operations. All right, so we know calculating the determinant by hand using the formula is really just not, not uh, practical at all. But if you have a very simple structure and the simple structure is that if A is triangular, meaning it could be upper triangular, lower triangular, or diagonal, uh, you just calculate the determinant by finding the product of the diagonal entries. And if you think about this, um, it doesn't take a, a lot of work, at least say in the 3x3 three three case, to show that this is true using the definition. Now, we know that the rho echelon form of a square matrix is upper triangular. And we know how to transform a, transform a square matrix to rho echelon form using elementary rho operations. So if we can discover how the application of an ERO to a matrix changes the determinant of the matrix, we could have a strategy for calculating the determinant of A. We would use the EROs to transform the matrix to upper triangular form. We don't need to have a row echelon form. And we just need to have it in upper triangular form, meaning that on the diagonal, we do not need to have ones. We do not need to be concerned about leading ones. It doesn't hurt. It's just extra work. We'll have to record how each elementary row operation changes the determinant. We'll have to compute the determinant of our final matrix U, which is simple because it's upper triangular. And then we'll have to figure out how do we update the determinant of U. In general, it's going to be different from the uh, determinant of A. So how do we update that determinant of U, which is easy to calculate, based on the impact of the elementary row operations we needed to get to the upper triangular form. So let's go and review elementary row operations and how they impact the 3 by 3 identity matrix. As a reminder, whenever you apply an elementary row operation to uh, an identity matrix, the resulting matrix is called the elementary matrix corresponding to that ERO. So if we uh, just swap two columns, say R2 and R3, uh, what is the uh, impact on the determinant? Well, the determinant of the new matrix is negative 1. What if I replace a row with a multiple of itself? Well, that just means that my determinant used to be 1, now it is k. The determinant of the identity matrix is 1. After scaling one row, now the determinant is k. And if I do this type 3 operation, suppose I replace row 3 with the sum of itself and k times row 1. Well, that only changes an off-diagonal entry, and so the determinant doesn't change at all. We're finding the value of the determinant by multiplying the diagonal entries. So we can extend these results to general matrices. Uh, let's start with a swap. And in all cases, we're going to call A prime the new matrix obtained by applying a single elementary row operation to A. If we swap two rows, then what happens to the terms in the determinant of A? 
Well, they have the same factors, but in a different order. And to be precise, if we've swapped two rows, then two factors in each term have swapped positions. And the result is that the coefficient of every term is flipped, and so the sign of the determinant of a is also flipped. So after a swap, the determinant of a prime is the opposite of the determinant of a. What about scaling a row by k? If we scale a row by k, remember that every term has a representative of that row. So every term is multiplied by k. And that means that since every term is multiplied by k, we could factor out that k. And we would see that the determinant of a prime is just k times the determinant of a. Now, if I multiply another row, now I'm multiplying two rows uh, by the same scalar k, I'll get a new matrix. Let's call it a prime prime. Uh, then we have two rows of a multiplied by k. And so I would have, well, the determinant of a prime prime is k times the determinant of a prime, which results in k squared times the determinant of a. If I multiply all the rows, the entire matrix by k, to get a new matrix b, uh, what happens then the determinant of b is, well, there's n rows. And so uh, you multiply all n rows by k. That will result in a factor of k to the power of n times the determinant of a. Now for our type 3 ERO, that's where we replace a row with the sum of itself and the multiple of a different row. We have to th think a little bit more about it. So let's start with an example. Uh, uh, let's go to the 4x4 four four case. Remember the 4x4 four four case uh, is going to have 24 terms in it. And of these 24 terms in our example, we're going to focus on just uh, these two that are highlighted in orange. In fact, why don't I go ahead and put those on the clipboard so that uh, we can refer to them a little bit later. So let's see, we want this term. And then we want to have this term. And you'll see why these terms got selected. The first term was just selected at random. And our example is going to deal with rows 1 and 2. And there's nothing special about rows in 1 and 2, but we just had to choose one for the, uh, choose a couple of rows for the example. And the reason why then we looked at these, well, we'll see in a minute. Let me go ahead and put these on the clipboard. And I don't want to get out ahead of myself now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, like I said, work with rows 1 and 2. We're going to replace row 1 with the sum of row 1 plus k times row 2. And, of course, we're still going to call this new matrix A prime. And in the determinant of A prime, well, all the terms that have, uh, well, all the terms have a representative from the first row. And that representative is going to be replaced as follows, right? A11 will be replaced by the sum A11 plus K A21. A12 gets replaced by A12 plus K A22, and so on, right? That is the, those are the row entries of A prime in the first row. So now let's consider our term here. Let's see if we can... Make this a little bit larger. This is the term that we had selected. And so, uh, and again, this was just selected at random. We could have selected any other uh, term because every term has representatives from row one. And so now in uh, our updated matrix, we replace the a13 with a13 plus k times a23. 
And we can go ahead and remove the parentheses. And when we do, let me go ahead and you know, in a minute. And when we do, we get two terms. The first term has the exact same factors in the exact same order as the original term t. The second term is k times a term where we've replaced a13 with a23. So that should remind us of what we saw when we had two identical columns. Well, let's continue. Now t has the companion term. So now let's go. There we go. Now we can see. Here's our term t. And then down here is its companion term. Both terms in the determinant. And uh, we have swapped the row indices. So this goes 3, 1, sorry, 3, 4, 1, 2. This goes 4, 3, 1, 2. And so uh, this is another term. It has the opposite sign. That's going to be very important. Of course, that makes sense because essentially we have performed a swap. Now, uh, for our S term, we look at its corresponding term in the determinant of our updated matrix. Well, we would have the same pattern. We would have one term after removing the parentheses. One term is the exact same as s. And then the second term is k times something which has s, where we've replaced a14 with a24. Now look at these terms in blue carefully. Let's give them names. Let's call them t prime prime and s prime prime. Uh, they have the same factors in almost the same order. The only difference is that t prime prime has a23, then a24. s prime prime has a24, a23. Uh, the other two are the same in the same order. So yes, these uh, terms must have opposite signs. And when they are summed, even remember, each one is being multiplied by the same factor k. That doesn't impact when, the, when they get added together. They're still going to add to 0. So I have two terms now, s prime and t prime, from the updated matrix. When I add those together, I get, well, s and t, and then something that adds to make 0. So that says that the updated terms add to the same thing as the original terms. And since all of the terms in the determinant expression can be paired in this way, every term has its companion pair or companion term, we can say that the determinant of a prime or the terms of the determinant of a prime after you do the simplification are exactly the same as the determinant of a. So these type 3 elementary operations make no change to the determinant. And we can extend this reasoning that we use for the 4 by 4 case to the n by n case. Um, it should be pretty uh, easier to understand, so we'll go through it a little bit quicker. Uh, again, we're going to make the same um, transformation. We're going to replace row 1 with row 1 plus k times r2. Remember WLOG stands for without loss of generality, meaning that picking row 1 and row 2 uh, is there's nothing special about them. We could pick any uh, uh, row to update using any other row. And so uh, we're just going to pick out one term just like we did in our example. We'll call it t. It has n factors in it, and there's some permutation of 1 through n, or the column indices. And we'll go ahead and re apply our ERO. We get an updated term, t prime. We've replaced 
the first or the uh, uh, the t factor corresponding to the first row with that same number plus k times the corresponding factor from row 2. And then um, we can use the distributive property. Multiply that out. We're going to get two uh, terms after the multiplication. One which is the same as the original term from A. And then the second term, uh, which uh, looks like T, but one of the uh, factors has been replaced with the corresponding factor from row 2. And if we look at that term, we know that uh, we could find a corresponding term that's going to have the same factors but the opposite coefficient. And so they're going to add up to 0, and we'll just have terms that are identical to the original terms in the matrix. So we can say that the determinant of the updated matrix is the same as the determinant of the original matrix. And one thing that's important, and we're going to explore this in detail in our next video, is that uh, if you multiply the elementary matrix corresponding to an ERO times the matrix on the left, the updated matrix, so E times A, is the matrix where you've applied the ERO. And notice then that since the determinant of a swap, or the elementary matrix corresponding to a swap, is minus 1, and the effect of a swap on the determinant of A is to multiply the determinant by minus 1, we would have the determinant of E times the determinant of A will give me the determinant of the updated matrix. The same thing with a scaling operation. Uh, remember that the determinant of a uh, scaled identity matrix is just the scale factor K, and that's what we multiply to the original matrix to get the value of the, the determinant of the original matrix to get the value of the updated matrix. And remember that for the type 3, the determinant of that elementary uh, matrix is 1, so no change to the determinant. So in each of the three cases, we can say that the determinant of an elementary matrix times A is the determinant of E times the determinant of A. All right, let's use this technique in a couple of examples. Here we have a 4x4 four four example. It would be very challenging uh, to calculate this using any other means except for technology. The technology is going to use the, the technique that we're going to use. So let's calculate the determinant of this matrix. So uh, the original matrix, first thing I'm going to do is I don't want to deal with this uh, minus 2 up in the 1, 1 position here. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and swap 3 and 1. In retrospect, it probably would, would have been a better example if I'd started by just dividing the first row or by a negative 2 or multiplying it by a negative 1 half. But I've got another example where we do a scaling operation. So we'll pay attention to the scaling in that example. So here we've done a swap. And uh, now I've got a nice positive 1 here. also get that 0. It doesn't really matter because we're trying to get it into upper triangular phone form. So any of the entries above the main diagonal really um, have no impact on the determinant. All right, so now let's get some zeros beneath that 1. We'll use uh, type 3 elementary row operations to do that. Uh, and uh, those are all independent, so I'll go ahead and combine those as one update. And we'll say then that the determinant of A2 would be the determinant of A1. Uh, we need to do a few more elementary row operations to get the 0 below the 2. 
Remember, we don't need a 1 in the diagonal. We just need some number. And so uh, since the other two entries below it are multiples of 2, there's no point in uh, making this diagonal entry 1. So we'll perform a couple of more uh, type 3 operations. Still no change to the determinant. And then I'm just left with this negative 3 below the main diagonal. And so let's do one more type 3 elementary row operation. So all of those had no impact except for the very first one, which changed the sign. So uh, now here I have my upper triangular matrix U. Let me go ahead and put that on the clipboard here. And the relationship between the determinant of u, if I backtrack, like I said, the only thing that we have is that swap in the very first step, which will change the sign. So uh, I only need to change the sign of the determinant of u to get to the determinant of a. And so now, as a reminder, how do we calculate the determinant of a triangular matrix? We just calculate the product of the diagonal. So I'd have 1 times 2 times negative 3 times 1. That gives me negative 6. Then i got to swap the sign. So the determinant of a is 6. Now, remember that we talked about columns in a determinant, that we could have actually defined everything in terms of column ascending order. And as a result, any property that we mention about rows and their relationship to columns has a corresponding or analogous property for columns and its impact on the determinant. So remember, for example, that if we had a row of zeros, the determinant would be zero. If we had a column of zeros, the determinant would be zero. So we could talk about elementary column operations to help us calculate the determinant of a matrix. And it's the same three, it's just applied to the column. So we either do a swap, or we replace a column with a scalar multiple of itself, or we replace a column with the sum of itself and a multiple of a different column. And the impact on the determinant is exactly the same. A swap changes the sign. Scaling a column multiplies the determinant by that scale factor. And this type 3 elementary column operation has no impact. So let's use a combination of elementary row operations and elementary column operations to calculate the determinant of this 5 by 5 matrix. Now, elementary column operations could be used to transform a matrix to lower triangular form. And so that's going to be useful, because if I look at this matrix, uh, it has a lot of zeros already, which are above the main diagonal. And so let's try to use these elementary row operations and elementary column operations together to get this to a lower triangular matrix. So I'm going to start by actually doing two row swaps. I'm going to start off by swapping row 3 and row 5. Why am I doing that? Well, because row 3 originally had entries all the way across. No zero entries at all. But the original row 5 had a zero entry in the last column. And now, if I look at rows 3 and rows 4, rows uh, Row 4 has two zero entries at the, in the last two columns. And so if I make a swap there, now I'm making the uh, new matrix almost in triangular form. There's only three non-zero terms above the uh, main diagonal. And we can handle those terms with elementary column operations. It wouldn't be easy to eliminate them using elementary row operations, uh, but it is easy 
uh, using elementary column operations. So I'm going to start by scaling column 5 by 1 half. I didn't really need to do that. If you're really looking carefully, you're probably saying, wait, why, why did we do that? Well, I chose to do that to illustrate the impact of a, a scaling operation on the final determinant. So you can see that afterwards, uh, I'm going to try to get rid of these two non-zero entries and in the fifth column and now I have identical entries in the first column and that should uh, really help us. So the next thing I'm going to do, let me go back so we can see, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take uh, the second column, replace it with the sum of the second column and the first column. That gets me the zero above the main diagonal where I want. It updates all of the other entries, but uh, I don't really mind that because the uh, anything on the diagonal or below uh, is still going to keep it in lower triangular form. And so then the last thing will be to uh, make the 2 and 3 0, and I'll do that by taking uh, column 5 and replacing it with column 5 minus column 1. Now that's a type 3 operation. In fact, both of the previous operations were type 3, so there's no impact on the determinant. Now it's in lower triangular form, and we can calculate its determinant. We'll just multiply 2 times 7 times 3 times 3 times 3. It gives us a pretty big number. It's 378, but we're not afraid of big numbers. All right, and now how we have to update this determinant based on the impact of the uh, transformations we performed. And all of them were type 3 transformations except for, well, the scaling and the swaps. But we did two swaps. Since we did two swaps, it's going to change the sign and then change the sign back. So really, the only thing that's going to change the value or the only update required is the impact of the scaling. So determinant of A2 then is going to be twice the determinant of L, but determinant of A2 is the same as the determinant of A. So to get the determinant of A, we're just going to have to multiply uh, 2 times the determinant of L. And we get our final answer, 756.